Hello and welcome, this is Alzani. I'm taking a short break from my Vive in order to try to perfect something. I did a video a while back just to test of just some naval tips and basic guide and it was it was bad. It was really bad, but I was just testing out the Elgato and I was scared that if I ran the capture card at the same time as the VR it wouldn't work and obviously if you if you've seen the rest of my channel it works very well although I do have to improve my content editing <laughs> but anyways you can go check that out I'll put a little link at the top if you want to go check out my VR videos later it'll be up there the whole video but at any rate if you're here it's because you want to learn the basics of naval combat in War Thunder and we're gonna go over just some crude bare bones stuff you need to know now early on the boats you're gonna have are gonna have one weapon those ones aren't that complicated I'm gonna go on weapon ammunition types which will make a large difference but some of it has changed I learned a lot of it in CBT and it's definitely been tweaked a little bit but for the most part it's more or less the same and I still do play this on occasion like I'm trying to grade Japanese when I have time I just get kind of annoyed playing by myself and it's it's really hard to get some of my new friends to play this, even though they can play it on console with me, just because of the steep learning curve. Whereas the tanks are almost too easy for some of the freaking youngins I work with, such as Sean. I'm pretty sure Zach would probably get into it too, but he'd probably find it a little easy too. But at any rate, the first thing I'm going to go over is going to be the difference in the weapons types. Like, if you're going to see in the crew skills, Gunners, and it's a lot more complicated than the other one, but also not. But you're going to see the gunner skill is actually going to affect your reload skill for once. Although I think it might still do that in the other one, too. But I think that just goes under logistics before with aircraft. But when you're here, we've got auxiliary, AAA, and main caliber. And you're going to see that here. Like, that's a main caliber gun. That means, by default, that's going to be the gun I'm going to be aiming with, as well as this one, which is... I still think it's really weird they did that that way, but nonetheless, it would have been cooler if these two front guns were linked, but... And these are considered auxiliary guns. I don't know why that disappeared for a second. And there's two of them on here. Now, in order to get the auxiliaries, you type, or you just push Alt and then 2. At least for Xbox, or for uh, PC, you just do Alt 2. And you can swap them out. Like, I can swap to auxiliaries. All three would be AA, which I don't have any on this particular boat. And then I can just go back by hitting Alt-1. You can also hold X-2 and X-3 and even X-1 now, which they didn't have in CBT, to tell the AI for those weapon groups to target that target first. They still won't target it unless it's at a certain range. And I've seen sometimes where they'll still ignore something within shooting range which kind of annoys me but nonetheless it helps you set up priority targets like if you see a bomber circling you and you think he's probably going to do a run for you it wouldn't be a bad idea to look up do x2 and 3 so your ai gunners know you know ignore the other aircrafts and shoot that guy first all right and then i'm going to hop in a match and we're going to show some basics going on in here Oh yeah, and one of the things too you should learn is that aircraft are way different in arcade. Like arcade mode, air mode, it's different. Bombers aren't as useful. You gotta worry about people strafing you from high up above. You don't have to deal with any of that in here, and I love that. Most of the fighting's gonna be low. Because even the fighters, there's not a whole lot of aircraft going around. So they're gonna spend a lot of their time flying low. That is pretty loud. I got to adjust my headset. Uh, another thing right here, you can see I can hit Q, and I'm firing one torpedo at a time. And if I hit X to lock on, he'll do a, it'll do a projected course. I don't think that guy's going to be dumb enough to keep driving the straight lines. That fired all at once. It wasn't supposed to do that. Awesome. How did a frigate get in here?
No, oh, I can still show you more footage. I didn't expect that. Oh, that guy's gonna park. It's gonna make him really easy to get hit with some artillery. It's the joys of being higher too. Okay, the way this is supposed to work, I just hit Q. Now, when I push spacebar, see, it's dropping one at a time. They won't reload until all of them are out. I don't know why I'm shooting at that when I can't actually see it, but whatever. I gotta dump these torpedoes just so I can reload it. Because of the way that guy's positioned, I can shoot up and over. I'm not going to do a whole lot of damage to a frigate. Oh, what was that? Seriously, what the heck was that? No, no, and that's the other thing you got to be careful for. A lot of these guys got tunnel vision. He gets in my friggin' way and I get stuck on him. Because he could have been paying attention to where he's driving. I saw him, but it was too late. But yeah, you're going to see that a lot too. But now I can pull out some planes. Like you can see, this comes a lot more fun. Like this one I especially love. Like I'm switching to ground targets on this just because it's got AP rounds. And with this particular thing, because it's 50 cals with AP rounds, most of these boats aren't going to have armor anywhere but in the turrets. I can do some serious damage. And I've also got little rocket tubes. Which will also do some fun damage. I mean, torpedoes would definitely work better, and bombs will work pretty good too, but it just feels pretty fun because I get to turn this thing into basically an attack aircraft. I get lucky, I can find one of those frigates again, and I can just go hog wild on it. I just gotta watch out for that heavy AA. I am a big enough target, a heavy AA could do some serious damage to me. Can I also go mess with this guy? He's a pontoon boat, so he might actually. No, no, he's not a pontoon plane. I was gonna say, if he's pontoon, he might try to land. No, he is. This loadout is not optimal for chasing this guy, but all I need is one good burst. I'm going to try to see if I can get my hands on this light AA. If he sees me, I'm screwed. I'm actually surprised that didn't do anything. That was sadly disappointing. Oh, and one of the other advice tips I do need to give out is if you can group up, do it, and try to stick together. You do get bonuses for helping each other. It's mostly for lines. Oh, yeah, and then I can show real quick, like right here, Alt 2. These are considered auxiliaries. I am now in charge of them. The AI is now running my main gun. I can switch back, and these guys are just doing their own thing. And you push E. Now they're aircraft only. Now they're ship only. Now they don't fire. Now they shoot everything. That does come in handy. Like, there's a lot of planes nearby. I may want them to ignore boats, because they may want to shoot a boat that's two kilometers out. But there's a plane about to strafe me, and I want them to attack that. I just tap E real quick. Until they're on AA mode.
And with some of these, like this Beaufort, I can actually take out aircraft if I get lucky. Catches, I might shoot my own aircraft in the process. And I have this thing loaded with AP, so... But if I shoot him in the engine block, I'll rip it apart. I'm not going to hit this guy without some HE, though. Not from this range. I might get lucky, though. It's pretty much the only thing we're shooting at. Nonetheless, I get to show off the basics. Like right here, I'll show off right here. There's X2, X1. I let my AA gunners now no, target that guy first. Oh, sh isn't it? Yes! I managed to swivel, swivel past it all. That was actually a pretty good blind guess. Like if I wasn't paying attention, I probably could have died pretty easily. So we can get to see. You see, like, the AI gunners, well, they would have shot at that guy anyways. There's nothing else to shoot at. See, that's another thing. Even though I was using AP, I just probably punched a hole right through that guy's cockpit. There's probably a 40 millimeter hole in that guy's chest. Because I do not carry HE on this thing. I prefer the AP belts. Or AP HE. He's dropping some big boy bombs. So you can also see he didn't have a salt fuse delay on that. Or it didn't just explode at all. That's really weird. And you want to use your smoke sparingly. A lot of people get pretty excited and use them all over the place. Like I'm using the smoke as I get to the point because I am blocking my teammates view. I may be hiding them as well, but yeah. And then another thing too, like left control, it'll tell you you can fire these little bad boys. And this thing actually has little mouse traps in the front, but I didn't equip them, and I keep forgetting to do it when I do this. And depth charges may not sound that impressive because there's no submarines, but uh, the way it works, the explosion in the water, the water becomes basically it's like a cement wall slamming into the side of a boat it can do some serious damage with death charges so don't be afraid to use them if someone tries to get close to you or if you're a fast mover and you guys just happen to pass each other like at that particular map in that middle section there's plenty of opportunities if you're on your a game to drop a death charge and have someone pass you and drive into it and just get ripped apart Okay, but I pretty much covered all the basics I wanted. Like, you can look at this stuff and see. Like, obviously, first thing you want to unlock, pretty much everything in War Thunder is going to be the tool set, fire protection. Like, nowadays, it even automatically starts you with the tool set. Thank God. It used to do dry docking and other lame shit. But, yeah. And after that, I recommend finding what you want. Like, me, I know what type of ammo I like. Like, I want this AP ammo. So once I got these two, I went straight for this AP ammo. And the turret gunners, they do come in handy because they're 20 millimeters of shooting small boats. But for the most part, the Bofors is powerful enough that I just use the HE. Because they're, mo they're mainly just going to be pecking at little boats. And they're going to be my main anti-air defense. But like my pumps, those are last. Oh, I don't have the mousetrap unlocked yet. Okay. We're going to work on unlocking the mousetrap. But yeah, they have a little mousetrap. It just shoots little mortars in front of the boat. It's the same thing. It's like a depth charge mortar. It shoots it in front. It does an explosion. If you're caught in the shock wave, you can take some hull damage. It's not as dangerous as the depth charges, but you can shoot in front. It's kind of amusing. It creates a splash effect, but I haven't really killed anyone with the mousetraps yet. It's the same thing here. Like, 
I'm looking at all the stuff like this is actually not bad. Increasing the pitch and yaw speed will help the AI gunners track moving targets. That comes in a lot because you're going to be using a lot of freaking AI gunners in these boats and that comes in really handy. Like I said. But I got the basics and I'm debating right now if I want to go smoke screen. But at the same time I really really like. I like my AP. So I'm probably going to do AP rounds first. Another tactic that's legit, it works, if you want to go that right, is if you just unlock each tier one at a time, you do get bonus XP. So just unlocking these, I've done it before, if I don't see anything I really want, or like if I try to unlock this, I may just knock out all the tier ones, or knock out these because it'll be less. And then using that, I get a small bonus towards whatever ship I'm researching or playing or whatever it is. It works with everything. But yeah, that concludes my basics of the basics. Show the ba uh, how it works. You know, hit E to that. I eventually got to the point where you hit Q to shoot one torpedo at a time instead of four. <laughs> and I tried to show off the bazookas in action. It would have actually been more fun to do this. Like, I had a video where, like I said, I was talking, but, uh... It was set up to capture my HTC Vive mic, and that doesn't work when it's on the other side of the room. And I actually managed to get some torpedo kills with this thing, and that these things really do shine. The US, the British, and the Japanese get a lot of really good stuff for naval. And it shows so well. Although, at the same time, Germany's got some cool stuff too. These junkers, they may not drop torpedoes, but they're pretty damn effective too at both strafing and dropping bombs and like I said there's almost no armor on these boats like I don't know if I said that in this particular one but there, look you can see it there's almost no armor there's some armor here on the bridge there's some armor here but if I was attack you attack this from above there's no armor plating the closest thing to armor is actually the engine block itself and that ain't gonna stop it so the aircraft is extremely useful and then you got things like this or, I do not like driving this in arcade, because it's so easy to kill. But, in arcade naval, if I take this out the right time and get lucky, and I don't get attacked by enemy fighters, or I can lead them to my teammates who shoot them down quickly, this thing is just brutal. Like, I carry two 1,000 kilo bombs. The kill radius on this thing is like, I can blow a ship in half from like 100 meters. Well, maybe not 100 meters, but it feels like 100 meters. It can definitely do some damage, and I don't have to be accurate, which means I can actually sit above, like, one kilometer, or sometimes I've gone up to two kilometers, and I can just drop bombs on the slower, bigger targets from up there, and every now and then I'll get lucky, and I'll have people grouping up, or they'll camp, like those guys that like to park their boats for some reason. Oh my god, I love it when they park their boats close to each other, because I can drop these and just go hog wild. And there's also another one somewhere in here. Is this it? No. There's one of them that can drop the the fits. I think this can drop one, and I have done that, and these are pretty cool. These, uh, this one right here is an actual guided bomb. It's a little tricky to use. I may do a video just on using it. It is very effective. It has a very big explosion radius as well, but those other ones, those 1,000 kilos, have the bigger one. But with this, you can set up from two kilometers easy, drop the bomb, and you can guide it in, and you can hit destroyers and other large targets pretty easily. In fact, Phil Daly did a really nice video on this. You can even get to the point where you can nail like three or four ships with this bomb, and it doesn't have that big of a warhead. But the fact that I can guide it in means I can get closer to a big cluster. But for the most part, because I can only carry one of those, i just been going with the freaking the two 1000s. You can also carry two torpedoes, but my problem with this is it's a pretty big target, and to drop the torpedoes, I gotta get low. And you can still use it, it's just there's a really good chance with these giant engines that an AA gunner or just a player gun or a player actually aiming at me is gonna rip this thing apart, or at least rip apart the guns and damage my crew inside the middle of the fuselage. Whereas with the bigger bombs, I can actually drop it at higher feet, higher points where I just gotta worry about the AI gunners because the players aren't normally paying attention. But there are occasionally 
rewards and whatnot events where you have to get torpedo kills and this thing will work it's not the best but she carries two very big torpedoes and the way it works in naval is a torpedo pretty much any torpedo will one shot a boat i don't think any of them have torpedo liners or whatever they're called the torpedo bulges the torpedo belts that's what they are so there's really no protection you hit someone with one of these unless you hit him in the nose with some of the bigger boats i think i've had that happen once you hit it in the nose where it does severe damage and it just causes flooding but you can still live through it but you hit someone midship there's just no way they're going to survive it's going to rip apart the module and destroy everything in it and it's going to be not salvageable that boat's going to be worthless even if it could still float it's not bad already they'd abandon ship anyways that is the conclusion of my basic if you somehow made it to this point please like and subscribe and go check out my VR videos they're pretty fun I'm doing a lot more of those I'm trying to do every Thursday to do Zal and company recordings sometimes it takes a little while like I just barely got one from last Thursday done today and I'm recording this on what is it Tuesday yeah it's Tuesday night actually now it's technically Wednesday morning because it's like 1 a.m. but I just barely finished uploading that <laughs> Tuesday night but that's because I ran into some issues also didn't help someone got VR sickness which screwed up the whole recording but anyways, enjoy, have fun.